Dr. David Schiller here, and today we want to talk about some basic thyroid physiology. And in a previous video edition, we talked about all the different thyroid markers that aren't being checked. And we talked about how they may be checking TSH or maybe TSH and T4 and maybe T3 at times. But, and we let you know that there's actually 10 markers. And if you don't look at all the markers, you're not going to get the full picture of what's going on with that individual. We also talked about the fact that 90% of people that have low thyroid is due to an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's. And typically, even if they're checking for those antibodies, it doesn't really change how they take care of you. So even if they did look at these other markers, basically they just want to monitor a, a dosage of a hormone in order to get your numbers to look okay, but yet you still have symptoms. So let's just look over some basic thyroid physiology and relate those markers to this physiology. So let's start up in the brain. And up in the brain, there's a place called the hypothalamus. And that's where much of your endocrine function or your hormone function is being controlled. And the hypothalamus will send information down to the pituitary gland. And the pituitary gland not only controls the thyroid, it controls the adrenal glands. It controls your sex organs like your testes or ovaries. And the pituitary then is what is going to be speaking to the thyroid. The thyroid is a two-lobed gland that sits at the base of your neck. And the idea is that there's a communication coming down. And the pituitary message that's coming down is called TSH. So when you're getting your TSH measured, you're looking at the communication coming from that pituitary going to the thyroid. Now, just to let you know, up in the hypothalamus, or it regulates the hypothalamus control over the pituitary, are two neurotransmitters called serotonin and dopamine. So there's neurotransmitters that regulate how that pituitary is going to be controlled, which is going to regulate how the thyroid is going to be controlled. Now, the thyroid itself is going to produce two hormones. It's going to produce T4 and T3. So you've maybe seen those on your blood work. The T4 is produced in an amount about 93% of the total, and the T3 is about 7% of the total. Now, here's the kicker. The T4 hormone is an inactive form. It's inactive. It's the T3 that is active. Okay. Now, these two hormones, therefore, the 93% that's inactive needs to be carted around through the body to be activated by enzymes that allow it to become T3. The places where the T4 goes to be activated, 60% of it is being activated in the liver. 20% is being activated in your intestines, in your digestive system. The other 20% is being activated in all other tissues of the body. So the health of your thyroid and how well it's regulating your body has to do with a lot of different things. And it's not just about getting your T4 levels and your TS TSH levels at a certain point. The problem is you can get them into a certain point where they think that's normal, but yet you still have symptoms. So when we evaluate you, we're evaluating all those markers. So for instance, what carts these hormones around the body to be, become activated is a, a protein called thyroid binding globulin. The thyroid binding globulin can be affected by hormone levels as it relates to estrogen and progesterone. So the TBG can be affected in, an, in a negative way if you've had past history of birth control pills or past history of hormone replacement like estrogens or progesterones. The amount of taxicab driving these things around to the liver and intestines can be affected. The other thing that can be affecting how well your thyroid functions, therefore, is how is your liver function? If the liver is not functioning well, then you're not going to be having good liver function, a good thyroid function. The other place that T4 is being converted to T3 is your intestines. And you know what converts them? Is the good bacteria. So if you have dysbiosis or a dysregulation of the good bacteria in your intestines, then you're not going to get good conversion. So there's all different types of problems that can occur, and you have to look at all the different places where it, it, it can occur. So, for instance, you could have the autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's attacking the thyroid, 
And that's why we check for those antibodies, TPO antibodies and TG antibodies. That's telling us if the thyroid function itself is being attacked by your own immune system. And that's for another video edition. So just to let you know, there's lots of places where this can go wrong. You need to check all the different markers and how they relate to your thyroid function. Where they're being converted is the place where they're being converted in ill health. And that's why you have to look at the entire person and not just look at TSH and T4 or just TSH alone. So I'd like to thank you for watching and make it a great day.